Hello. So we went to the bins today. We decided to just uh, bypass the intro in the car um, and just jump straight to the hall, but we can talk a little bit about what happened. So how was it today? Today was a good day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got a, a bunch of um, really interesting things. I'm only gonna show you some of them, but yeah, today was overall a good day, in and out in two hours. I was actually ready to go at like 90 minutes in, and then Katie was like, one more rotation, I'm like, fine. It's tough because they're they're really on it now. Like they're so fast with the rotations. They're so fast, the doors open at eight o'clock. By 8.20, they're clearing the first rotation yeah. out on one side. I haven't even gone through anything by 8.20. So that part's, I mean, I love that they're fast, but it's almost too fast. Yeah, well, I mean, we do it a little bit differently, so I like to be like there as the road, you know, when they let people run out to to go dig through the bins because I am trying to find like cool vintage streetwear and stuff, and that's the stuff that's going to be like grabbed up first if people see it, and so I want to be right in there. Vicky kind of, you know, she's off looking at other stuff and she waits a little bit, hangs back before she gets in there, so that doesn't matter to her as much. But it's tough because it's like they're going so fast now that by the time you're done looking at one side, they're already like so close to bringing out the other side that mm -hmm. it's hard to be like, I gotta go. Plus that last rotation was on the side I like because it's got the bins that are back that you can sneak and look through before they actually let people out. And I found a couple of things doing that, so. Oh, you sneaky. You're I know, sneaky I am person. sneaky. Listen, if everybody else is gonna do it, I'm gonna do it a little bit too. I'm just a little bit more subtle about it. Not that nobody notices, but. The other t-shirt bros, they don't care because they do it too, so it just kind of makes me one of the cool kids. <laughs> Not really. There's nothing about you that's a kid, but I mean, <laughs> other than your personality, I suppose. <laughs> All right. Anyway, um, I think I have like 11 pieces. I got a lot of, um, a pretty good stack of like just basic mids t-shirts that I can get like maybe 30 bucks for, but I got some really cool pieces too. And you got some pretty awesome stuff. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I got some, I got at least a few pieces that I expect to get about a hundred dollars a piece for. So, well, I spent like $33 and the thing is, it's like, I only need to sell one of my mids and I'm pretty much mm -hmm. hitting the ground running all pure profit after that. So that I is, spent 80, so it was yeah. a good like 15, $20 more than my usual, but I did have a couple of heavy pairs of shoes and things. Mm -hmm. So. All right, well, why don't you start off and uh, show us what you got. All right, speaking of shoes, I guess I'll start with these because they're right on the top. I'm so, so jealous. Yeah, these, I mean, I would have grabbed these no matter what, but the fact that they're made in England, and I don't know why this person had them in their hands and then threw them back, but these are vintage made in England Doc Martin uh, platform, not quite platform, it's just the thick Doc Martin soles, but made in England, you know, two-tone wingtip Oxfords, creepers, whatever they want to call them. There's all different words that you can call them, but they're like in really good shape. They've got some creasing on the top where people wear them. That's okay. You want them broken mm -hmm. in because Doc Martens are super stiff. It's like motorcycle jackets. Nobody wants to wear them the first few months because they're so stiff and hard to break in. So I can get, and they're a good size too. They're not small. These are a decent uh, men's size, oh, size 11. So I could probably get at least $100 for these plus shipping. They are heavy. Awesome. They're like three pounds. So I am going to charge shipping on these. This is not going to be a free ship kind of deal. They're too big to put in a padded mailer and stuff like that. So at least a hundred bucks, but I probably paid five for them. I am super, that's probably your one piece I'm really jealous of. Like super, super <laughs> jealous of. Sorry about it. Sorry about it. All right, my first one, um, I, I kind of arranged these from, you know, the most mediocre to the best of the best. Uh, this is, I, I need to wash it, but it's nicely worn in. It's on the gear for sports tag. Um, but you can see that it's nice that it's dated because this is a final four. Uh, women's Basketball Final Four 2006. Um, so it's just a really cool sports tee. Uh, it's not quite vintage, not quite there yet. Although a lot of times with 2006, I mean, we're three years away. I will usually put in the title Vintage Y2K, but then I'll say 2006. So it's not like I'm tricking anybody, um, but uh, I feel but like- it's true, like the mid 2000s, um, the kids are considering it vintage, so. Yeah, so it's not quite at the 20 year mark, but I'll still say it's vintage. But again, I do say 2006. Uh, so this, I'll probably price it, you know, 48.99. Hope to get 40, 35, 40 bucks for it. We'll see. I don't know. Maybe there's a bunch of them out there. We'll see. 
Um, so they did have a bunch of creepy dolls, as everyone says, but now people there know that I like the creepy dolls, so I did start getting some of them handed to me. Uh, this one, I'm gonna have to take her dress off and soak it. It's very, very yellowed, but this is a vintage 1970s Madame Alexander doll. Um, I believe it's the Pussycat doll, but I need to, um, I haven't researched anything, obviously. This is just pulling it right out of the bag. One of the things that's nice, that's present, is her little pacifier, and that is usually missing. So she is vintage 1970s, and all her original clothing she's missing one little booty which stinks uh, but I do think if this is the one that I think it is this is probably a $75 doll so I'll take the five to ten minutes to clean her up because it only cost me like two to three dollars now by nice do you actually mean horrifying she's not horrifying actually this binky. one's kind of cute no that one's not horrifying the it's creepy ones, ones are creepy creepy little ghostly dress yellow dress creeping me out right now man um, okay, I've got this Henley t-shirt. Uh, it's on the Cotton Deluxe tag. Um, this is probably, this Cotton Deluxe tag, you do see it in the in the 90s. Um, this, I would say, is probably early Y2K. It's got the fabric made in the USA, assembled, by, uh, assembled in Honduras. Um, this actually, it's got the embroidered patch right there, and it is the Oklahoma State Borough, Bureau of Investigation. So this is a state agency um, for the government, uh, law enforcement agency. Um, it is it is single stitch on the sleeves, uh, maybe on the bottom too. Yeah, it's actually single stitch all around. I mean, I don't know how desirable this is going to be, but I usually will pick up. I picked up a couple of FBI t-shirts as well, um, but I'll probably list this also for like the do the forty eight ninety nine and hope to get forty bucks out of it. All right, so this one is not in super great condition, but it's um, it was lightweight, so I paid like $1.50, so um, <sighs> projects. But anyway, um, this is a vintage, it's kind of, it's like definitely 70s, so it's got this little blues on type of top with the, um, with like the sheer, it's probably like silk or organza on the top, and then it has the polyester straight skirt. Now this is 70s and this type of fabric right here and this pattern is very reminiscent of like the Roman type of Grecian thing. The whole Maxfield Parish artwork stuff was very popular in that era and some of the clothing reflects that. Maxfield Parish is a, um, a, a famous painter that uses um, reflections of light in his painting and a lot of it is very romantic and Grecian in style. It, he was pre-Thomas Kincaid before Thomas Kincaid became like that awful, god-awful shit that you have on everybody's wallet in the 80s. Um, anyway, there is a really, really badly done repair on the side where it, where it tore. So I'm gonna cart this off to uh, Crystal and see if she can work her magic to try to do some of the repairs on this silk overlay. As long as it's not glaringly obvious like that and I'm able to get the stains out, I'll try to do the stain part first. Um, I think I can get about $75 for this dress. But it is going to be a project. Uh, what the heck is organza? It's just a type of fabric. It's like it's like a semi sheer fabric that's used in clothing. Organza. It's yeah. gonna be fun to say. All right, this needs to be washed, uh, but it's a cool um, zip up hoodie. And anyone who knows me, I love me a zip up hoodie. I don't like a pullover hoodie because I need to be able to regulate my temperature without having to take it on, on and off over my head. So I'm all about the zip up hoodie. It's on the Jan Sport tag. Um, I think this one, let's see if I can get in close and it'll brighten up a little bit. Uh, I think this one is late 90s, early Y2K. Usually the, the a lot of the 90s ones will say made in the USA. Um, but like I said, it's a nice zip up. And this is U UCR, so it's University of California Riverside. Um, so it's just a nice black zip up hoodie. It's got some schmutz on it. It needs to be, uh, it's got some pilling that needs to be shaved off, but the schmutz, I can tell it will wash off, um, but it's got the nice uh, sewn on lettering. Um, I have no idea what to value this at. It's a nice zip up hoodie. I'll probably list it for 70 and hope to get 50. Or 40-ish, yeah. So this is a vintage, probably late 80s, early 90s. Everybody that I went to high school with and I graduated in 93 was wearing a dress by this brand when we went to prom. Uh, the brand is Roberta. This was the type of dress that you would buy at all of the you know, bridal shops for prom dresses. So this is Barbie pink. So it's got this uh, semi-boned top with the strapless, uh, with, with the little spaghetti strap. So it looks almost like a corset top with a, wow. 
organza, like taffeta type of organza skirt. It is Barbie pink, it's super cute. Keep in mind, if you're coming to the Boss Reseller Remix, you are probably gonna wanna wear a funky prom dress. So if you think this will fit you, let me know, hit me up. Yeah, we're doing vintage prom for the final party. Yeah, vintage prom, and it doesn't have to be any era. It can be any era, mm -hmm. but anyway. Um, so I'm probably gonna list this for about 150 to 200, this particular brand uh, of vintage uh, prom dresses from the 80s and 90s, so it does sell very well. Uh, the bigger the size is the better, uh, but unfortunately most of them are a lot smaller. All right, next up, I've got a dead stock t-shirt. This is vintage Y2K. It's on this Hanes beefy tag that you see in the early mid 2000s. Um, it does have the tag on it, so that's nice. Uh, and this is, I'm sure you've seen the bumper stickers that say women who behave, uh, women who behave rarely make history. Um, so I'm just, yeah, I've seen that bumper sticker on cars for, for a couple of decades now. I don't remember what that quote is from, but it says- Well, behaved women rarely make history. That's usually what it says. Okay, so women who behave, yes, that's the, the right one. But this says, the Cribs, Jerome, Arizona. Now the Cribs, the Crib District in Jerome, Arizona, that was where the brothels and the bordellas were. Um, and so this is just kind of like a touristy tea that's that's kind of celebrating that piece of their history. Um, Jerome so, is a very, very tiny haunted town right outside mm -hmm. of uh, Sedona. It's famously haunted ghost town. Yep. It is paranormal. populated. It's not an empty town, yeah. but uh, yeah. Built so, into a hill, it's pretty cool. We've got a lady here, a lady of ill repute, a lady of the night. A lady um, of ill repute. <laughs> I don't know what I'll price this at. I'll probably do the $48.99, but who knows, maybe it'll just end up going for like 30 bucks. But it's dead stock, and I actually did uh, a little quick Google search or on search on, on eBay. There aren't any other ones out there, so I think it's a cool shirt. It's nice and soft, too. Um, okay, so this is a vintage, these are vintage, probably early 90s, like 90s does 70s type of, uh, the low waist, flare leg, almost bell bottom type of jeans. Uh, they're nothing uh, super fantastic, but made in the USA, a little bit of stretch to them. The brand is, I don't even know. Um, I'll have to look up the RN number because the brand is a symbol. You can't read that? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. It's got these tiny little flat pockets that are sewn down. Um, they actually look and feel a lot like 70s jeans. They're not though because they have spandex and it says spandex and spandex, even though it was used, wasn't called spandex um, and it wasn't used, you know, with any regularity before like the 80s ish. So I don't know, they're just like a staple just because they're retro. They're like a wheat color or like an oatmeal color, probably 30, 40 bucks and they look small. Maybe like a size three, size five. They're cute. What, no organza? No organza. All right, next up, this shirt. There are a lot of uh, variations out there available of this shirt. Uh, again, this is on that Hanes Beefy Tea tag. So this is gonna be early to mid 2000s. So get all titled this uh, vintage Y2K. Um, and it is, it says the original founding fathers it's a native american uh, t-shirt you can see there's mount rushmore behind them uh, but variations of this design there's a lot of them out there so i'll probably list this one do like the 35.99 and hope to get 30. Hmm. sorry our color looks very weird uh, well, everything, it was like everything looks a little like has a bluish hue to it we're not sickly i promise it only did that for a second i think it might have had something to do with that brown shirt being up there but whatever carry on uh, I do believe this is a handmade dress. This very much uh, feels like uh, Molly Ringwald, Pretty in Pink, uh, handmade vintage 80s dress. Awesome. It is in pink with like the half sleeve. It has this printed floral, like tone on tone, um, you know, fabric print. It's like satin and these, the lace, the lace bib front, but really what you've got to see, it was like somebody trying to make gunny sacks, but not well. Um, it's well made, it's just not gunny sack style and quality. The lace panel in the back, but the best part is the big old bow and ruffle on the butt. I love it. So uh, this is definitely like an early 80s type of dress, a prom dress, uh, and it's in a bit of a larger size. It's probably a modern eight, size eight to 10. So um, yeah, very much, very Molly Ringwald. Very nice. All right, next up, um, I almost didn't get this just because of the weight, but then I'm like, that's silly. I'm, I should just get it because um, really I'm paying $1.89 a pound. Come on. We could be in California where it's $2.99 a pound. Crazy. Um, this is a vintage 
Levi's trucker jacket. Uh, the great thing about Levi's is they always give you all the style numbers. Um, so you can see uh, when you like want to Google it or look on the old eBay, you can see this 70507 and then there's another four numbers there um, to kind of to be able to see your comps and everything. Uh, but this is probably late 80s, maybe early 90s. I'm not the best at dating. Um, uh, I can Levi's. Tell, I can tell you when I look at the tag. But it's got the paper tag inside. It's not made in the U.S., so that's the one thing. Um, but it does have a paper tag, um, which any of the more modern stuff, they have like four tags, and they're like those... 94. 94, okay. By the, by the code. Okay, so 1994, and, um, you know, sometimes they can be a little slow to sell. I'll probably price it at 100 and hope to get 65, 75 for it. Uh, we'll see. Okay. So it was definitely vintage, kind of ugly prom day. Like I got a couple of dresses. I'm only showing you a few of them, but here's another one. This one is polyester, 80s. It has this pastel floral uh, fabric and these little flutter sleeves. Uh, it has some shoulder pads. Drop waist is another thing that it's called. You know, so that means the waist goes below your actual waist. It's called a drop waist. And then it has this side ruching. Ooh, with this little like ro you know fabric rosette here and a, and a full skirt this is actually kind of pretty i think on the right person this this is a good um dress shape do we have sheets like this we do have sheets very similar to this <laughs> uh very 80s uh the brand it's made in the usa the branded i don't think is anything special um but this is the tag and then it has the paper tag under it and it's just made in the usa um but yeah i mean this is probably like a 50 dollar type of dress all right, next up, I have this Orvis kind of shacket. I know Vicki has, uh, has shown the Orvis a couple of times. I think she's had a, a couple of buys, bless you. Um, a couple of buys, maybe a couple of sales recently on the Orvis. But this is a nice uh, wool shirt shacket, and it's got the um, corduroy collar going on. This is in really nice condition. Of course, That's it's all- That's the vintage Orvis tag too. Mm-hmm. Of course, it's all scratchy. I would say this is probably 90s, wouldn't you say, based on that tag? Yeah, probably 90s, maybe even 80s. Okay, so we'll, I'll, I'll do a little research on that, but um, it's in really nice condition. It's all wool, so it's kind of scratchy. It's a really nice- I don't even know that I would call that what a shacket. I know it kind of really? does button front, like, yeah, I guess I would. Okay, I was looking at the bottom. That's a nice one. That's like, that's like very Pendleton-esque. Yep, it absolutely is. And here's my little tip. I know I've said this before, when you have something like this as wool that's susceptible to moth holes, is if you are near a window or anything like that, you just hold it. So when I was buying it, I held it up, you know, open and to the light of the windows because it's really quick to see like if a light comes through like a pinhole or moth mm -hmm. hole. Um, Not that that means don't get it because no. pinholes and moth holes on good quality wool, uh, shirts are like that or the, the flannels, Pendleton, things like that. It doesn't uh, depreciate the value that much. People yeah. will still buy them. But you just want to know what you're getting into, into, especially if you're buying it somewhere where you're having to pay an actual price, not just like by the pound of the bins. Um, but it had a little bit of schmutz on it. I was able to get most of it off with a, I just used a wet wipe because it's pretty much just water. Um, I'll probably have to do another pass on it. But otherwise, it's in fantastic condition. What would you pay or sell this for? I'd probably list it for 100 Okay. I'll try to sell it for 65 to 75 Yeah, 75-ish. Yep. I mean, okay. you might want to list it for 129 to get that price or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, I, um, but look and see. I mean, there, I, I, it, you know, it's a, that is vintage and it's wool. Mm -hmm. It's nice. It's a really nice green color. All right. So this is a brand that I actually wasn't even aware of. Uh, Liz actually taught me this brand, you know, a while ago. But uh, this is a high-end women's brand of clothing. It's kind of like um, I'm trying to think of an example of where it, it, they sell it at Dillard's, but they sell it at many places. It would not quite St. John, but in between like Masuk and St. John, it's kind of like Masuk type of brand. It's called Ming. Uh, Ming Wang. So that is the tag. And I think, I think there are a couple of different variations of the tags. I don't know how old this one is. It may be, even be current. I'll look it up, but it's really like that knitwear type of clothing that old ladies like. Um, it has, it's like conservative and, you know, has very, very light shoulder pads. It's an open front cardigan um, in navy blue with a little, um, you know, polka dot trim. So I, I think I can get 75 bucks for this, maybe even more. Uh, very lightweight. I don't even think I paid the $1.69 for this. It was maybe $1.50, $1.45. Uh, they prefer to be called mature women, not old ladies. I'm a mature woman. Okay, so I can- 75 so I, and up is an old lady. Uh, mm, interesting. 
Okay, um, next up, this is actually something that Vicky gave to me. I found her a couple of cool things today, um, and so it, it works out well because there's you know stuff that she'll pick up that she knows I would appreciate more and she'll throw it my way. This is a really cool 80s racing jacket. I, I actually, I really love these, uh, these upstream racing jackets. See if we can get to actually focus here. Um, I love these jackets. Sometimes they're like uh, windbreakers and sometimes they're like this one where they're actually insulated. So this is actually quilted, has a quilted uh, insulated lining um, and it's just a black racing jacket. But then it has um, this trucking company, GS Shellhorn and Sons. Um, now I'm a little concerned about that apostrophe there, so we're just going to not talk about that right now. Um, <laughs> There's an apostrophe. I mean, maybe he has and sons what? Maybe he has one son, and this is uh, GS and his son's trucking company. We hope that they, he doesn't have multiple sons because then it would be an error. Um, but it's a really cool trucking thing. I tend to do pretty well selling uh, trucking items, but here you can see the jacket um, from further away. Um, I love. I just. I really love this, these upstream style jackets. Uh, I knew you going to want it. I know. So I appreciate it. Thank they're you. They're very members only esque. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what they remind me of. Okay. I'm going to go through my last three things all at once because they're all similar items and that I'm going to show you today. And uh, somehow there's no linens. They did have one bin with linens today. Of course, the linens in it were terrible, but they also have purses in there and there were a lot of good purses. So I'm gonna show you three. I picked up like five or six, but these three are the best of them. And this one is another white one that I'm, I think I can sell for at least $100, $150. I haven't looked up pricing recently, but this is a vintage coach. You saw me on the show on Sunday talking about coach handbags and the ones that are worth picking up and these are the best of the best to find. So this is a heavy, thick, all leather, vintage, could be probably late 80s, most likely early 90s. I haven't checked the code on it yet. Um, you know, full top grain leather, and this is in like a burgundy color, and it has the little, um, you know, lock key type of, what do they call this? Turn lock, sorry, turn lock uh, flap shoulder bag it's in really really nice shape there's one little blemish on this that i think i'm going to try to polish out but there's not excessive wear it's nice so like at least 100 it might be more so i'm pretty happy uh to find that one i mean i saw i grabbed it right away looked like coach and then i checked it after it was in my hand for a minute um another thing that i picked up this is probably vintage 60s early 70s this is just a little velvet shoulder bag with some uh, little gold tone rivets. It's, it's this bright Kelly green color that you can't quite tell that that's what it is. But you can tell by the vinyl interior and the heavy metal zipper that this is 60s or 70s. It's in great shape, super cute. I think I'm gonna list this for like 50, 60 bucks. There's no name, doesn't matter. It's about the style. Uh, just figure out a way to, to describe it really well. Uh, but yeah, there's no brand, and I don't even care that it doesn't have a brand. It's a really, really cute bag. Is that a Green Lantern purse? No. <laughs> the Green Lantern. He's got kind of a circular... Uh, yes, it's the Green Lantern. <laughs> Goober. And then, this probably came out of the same person's closet, but this is also a vintage uh, 60s, 70s-esque... That one's awesome. Uh, ...satchel bag. It, this one's a little bit bigger, but this looks like it's hand crocheted. It's not. This is navy blue. It is like little tiny granny squares with like faux pearls sewn into it. And all the pearls are there. Uh, all the pearls are there. There's no damage to this that I can tell. And the little granny squares look like, oh, there's one pearl missing now that you just pointed that out. But I do not think that's really relevant. No. There's none on the bottom because it's a flat bottom. And uh, it's fabric lined. Again, no, uh, no tags but it has the vintage heavy metal zipper for the little interior pocket. So that's how I can date it also based on the style and the construction. But I mean, I might, I'll probably list this for around $50 as well. I might even post some of these in a couple of the vintage uh, clothing groups that, I, that I'm in. It's so. really cute and it's, it's shocking that all those pearls stayed on there all these years because you would think it would- 50 years it must of not pearls. Have been used a lot. Uh, no, not one of them seemed to be. Stuff. So they, they were probably, uh, came from the same, uh, you know, same person's closet. Maybe there's an estate clean out of some kind. And that's it. That's what I've got for today. All right. I've got three things left. Uh, so this is a Tommy Hilfiger. It's funny because I saw, I don't know if you saw that Tommy Hilfiger robe. Um, it wasn't in the greatest condition. It was just white. And I looked it up and it's like, maybe I could sell it for 20 bucks. So I passed on it. Um, but then I saw this. This is one of the things I yoinked before I was actually supposed to. Um, it's Tommy Hilfiger. This is just a casual 
button down shirt, but. And again, we all know the Tommy Hill figure is not a go run and buy anymore, however. But this is a really cool kind of color block, heavy uh, shirt and the back of it and the sleeves are all like this heavy, dark denim. Very 90s, this is a very 90s. The front of it is burgundy or maroon. Yep. And it's like this cotton canvas and then the rest is the denim jacket. Yeah. And you know, that whole, you know, maroon, hunter green, navy blue, that screams 90s. Whenever you find those colors on uh, on clothing, especially in color block or, or striped clothing, it's usually 90s. Yeah, but it's like just this really heavy, nice, dark That's denim. a nice one. Yeah, I love it. So, probably, I don't know what I'll price that at. I'll see what, uh, what I can find for comps, if there's other stuff, if people are buying uh, Tommy stuff for a little bit more, we'll see. All right, next up, I've got this pullover kind of um, windbreaker jacket. Here's another uh, one of those gear for sports tags. Um, this I would say is, is probably 90s. Um, it's made in Hong Kong, extra large. Um, how, how was the elastic there, assistant? I was just checking to see if the elastic was crunchy and dried out. Yeah. Listen, we've talked about it. It happens all the time in Vegas. Yeah. This elastic is all stretched out and dried out, That's but... Okay. I don't think it really is going to make a difference because it's been stretched out for a long time. So yeah, I think it's fine, and you can wear it like that anyway. Um, there's it's, no pull cord. I thought yeah, it was. There's supposed to be a pull cord. You can see. So you could, if you had a spare pull cord, um, you could go ahead and, and replace that. Um, but this is Oregon Tech. is It's a school, Oregon Institute of Technology. Um, I'm from Oregon, so of course I was excited to see this. She loves all the Oregon stuff. But we drive by cars with the Oregon license plate. She's like, look, Oregon! Uh, yeah, we're not that far. It exists. <laughs> so if you saw a license plate that said Rhode Island, you wouldn't care at all? Big difference! I'm 3,000 miles away. Oregon's two states up. It's still like over 1,000 miles, okay? Where I'm from is over 1,000 miles. Okay, so anyway, University of Te or Institution of Technology. Um, not a lot of stuff. You'll see a lot of stuff out there for like Oregon State or uh, University of Oregon. Um, so this is kind of cool. I don't know. I'll have to see is there even anything out there um, to, before I decide how I want to price it. Now, my final thing to show. Now, the first thing Vicky showed I was most jealous of. I pretty much guarantee you this is the one piece I got today that she wished she would have found first. It's true. Um, so we're going to go ahead and show this. It is, you know, Vicky's always talking about this the Western Blazers, and this one is a beauty. It's nice because it's like soft and it's kind of lightweight. It's not super heavy. Um, it's and wool. Yes, it's made in the US. It's wool, but it's not like that heavy, stiff, scratchy. Made in the US, and it is Pioneer wear. Um, and it's this really cool, it's not leather. This is like a felted. That's like a felted suede. Mm-hmm. Uh, like yoke, that's what that's called. The, col the the shoulders in the back, that's the yoke. But look at the pattern on this. Look at the, it's got the little arrows pointing in. Super 70s, super 70s. Yep. And the other key about it being 70s is that, you know, mostly, this is a very telltale sign, mostly 70s into the early 80s. You've got these little buttons that look like they're woven leather. Sometimes they're leather, sometimes they're plastic, but the look of it looks like this. And generally those buttons mean that it's 70s into the early 80s. Mm -hmm. and it has see, all the buttons. It has all the buttons, because believe me, I bought the ones before where all the buttons were like, I realized after I bought it, they were all like disintegrating off. Um, so yeah, so, and, and I liked that when I looked at some of the comps uh, when I, just a little bit ago after I got home, um, this one's a little bit different than a lot of the ones that are listed because it's got like this textured kind it's of pattern like to it. It's like it's yeah. cool, but it looks like it's got like a tweed, you know, I don't know, textured weave to it of some kind. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. fun. So what would you price this at? I would price it at 150 just to get it that's started. What I was thinking. And then I would probably accept anything of 100 yeah. or more. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I hope to get at least 100 for it. Mm -hmm. um, but just... Uh, it's unique. Yep. Super awesome find. I was very excited to find this one. It's one that would look really good with a pair of jeans, whether you're like, yeah, you got that whole Western rockabilly, uh, you know, kind of even a little bit punk or hipster. Uh, that just crosses the genres. Yeah. So that's our, the highlights of what we picked up today at the bins. Again, we were there for just about two hours mm -hmm. and I feel like it was a really good day. Um, and they were on it. I think today is probably one of the fastest mm -hmm. I've seen as far as like turning over. They were crazy rotations and it just makes it a lot more fun. Um, otherwise you just kind of get, you know, kind of, especially if you're not finding anything, but today it's like lots of little gems, lots of mids. See, it was a good day. Very good day. All right, guys. Thank you so much. We Back appreciate it. Let us know down in the comments. What was your favorite thing that we found or favorite things? 
or if you have any questions or comments, we love to hear from you guys. We've been getting lots of great engagement on these uh, haul videos and we really appreciate it. It's a lot of fun. And of course, those of you that know that have purchased from us before, everything and anything is open for sale directly. It just contact us if you find something in our haul and you're like, hey, I have to have that. Don't buy it through eBay or whatever. Just contact us directly and, uh, you know, friends and family discount ops. One ops, 100% ops. <laughs> When you start talking like that, it's real sus. All right, that's bad. Forget it. Never mind.